A few decades ago, hip hop was a simpler place. If you had that special combination of talent, a good flow and work ethic, you might just have a shot at making it in the rap game. But even then, it's a challenge. The amount of gatekeepers blocking people from getting on in hip hop is absolutely staggering. However, times have changed and in this era of hip hop, it doesn't really matter whether you have any kind of lyrical ability or discernible talent. If you've got a good work ethic, hell, even if you've got a bad one, an addiction to Zans and Lean, simply having access to a free studio and hair dyeing materials might just be enough for you to make it. That's what's given us the Lil Pumps, the Lil Zans, and the Comethazines of this world. And you can't hate on these hustles because even if they're not technically good rappers, often they do come out with good music, catchy songs, and you can't really hate on them. They're shining and living the dream, and at least they're putting out songs that are catchy and enjoyable to some people. But then there's Viper. If you don't know about Viper the rapper, then you are in for a treat. Viper is probably the most prolific rapper of all time if you just look at musical output. The lyrical content of his music, zero out of 10. The production quality of his music, another fat zero out of 10, but my God, this man's work rate is a solid 11. It's been reported that in 2014 alone, Viper dropped 347 albums. Not songs, albums. Now I say reported because I'm obviously not going to go and verify and listen to every one of these horrendous albums. But what I can do is give you a whistle-stop tour of some of the best albums in his catalogue. So welcome back to Viper's top 10 albums. Coming in at number 10, we've got the classic Kill Yourself, My Man. Up at number nine, we've got One Million Vipers, but only one Vipper. Coming in number eight, it's the seminal Cops Can't Read. At number seven, it's an angsty entry with the classic Pray in Two Throw Acid in a Cop's Face. Number six, it's the more introspective There's a Gun Near My Head and Nobody's Holding It. At number five, we've got a more spiritual entry with The Moon Is My Son, He Looked Just Like Me. Two. Number four, a simple entry seemingly with some emo influences, I Seen a Skull. In at number three, you couldn't be a prolific hip hop artist without a little bit of subtle homophobia. It's these rappers claim they hard, but them f**ks never even seen the pen. His words, not mine. Number two, we see Viper getting all spiritual on us with his fuck the world, it ain't real, I bend the spoon with my mind, too. And coming in at number one, it's Viper's most famous and most successful album of all, Yule Cowards, Don't Even Smoke Crack. Now that last album is considered Viper's greatest success and breakout album. And the title track from that album of the same name is definitely by far Viper's most popular and probably most listenable track of all. Hell, Viper's career is even more impressive when you consider the fact that he has put all of this stuff together himself without a single feature. Take that, J. Cole. In fact, if you want to talk about influences, I think you can make a pretty good case that Kendrick Lamar stole his whole swag for the damn album cover from Viper's catalogue. The track Yule Cowards Don't Even Smoke Crack, in my opinion, is a tale of courage, depicting the struggle that any good crack dealer should have to go through, taking a little hit of the work before serving it up to the fiends to make sure that it's of the highest quality only. But the track goes much deeper than that with a healthy dose of interest inspection as Viper suggests that his ops are far too cowardly to take the obligatory hit of crack cocaine for quality control purposes only. But to be fair to Viper, this isn't the only hit in his catalogue. Another classic includes the song My Hops, which is Viper's paranoia anthem calling out his haters who want to see him dead purely out of jealousy for his patented two-handed hanger basketball dunk, as depicted in the music video. In fact, when it comes to music videos, Viper routinely leaves the fans begging for more. With only a handful of his music videos in circulation, the majority of them are made up of pretty slapdash green screen footage, with him rapping in front of a variety of ill-chosen background video clips, including anime or 9-11. But he often spices up his music videos by including scantily clad women of questionable backgrounds, which are routinely sourced from the online modeling directory Craigslist. So, are Viper's albums any good? Who knows, because they're literally unlistenable. But once you've heard one Viper song, you've pretty much heard them all. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why the fuck would somebody make 347 albums in a year? You can probably safely assume that there's some kind of monetary finesse going on here. In this delightful interview, Viper discusses his process, basically saying that he can put together an entire song from scratch, including making the beat on Fruity Loops and spitting the bars, in around an hour. He supposedly wrote an enormous amount of music in prison. His estimates slash lies about how many songs that he wrote whilst he was in the can have varied from interview to interview and range from around 300 to 2,000. For the time that I was in prison, I wrote over 2,000 songs. Wow. He's reportedly only in the rap game for royalty checks and discovered that when it comes to terrible music that nobody listens to, quantity is everything, maximizing his earnings by dropping as many complete projects as he possibly can. But then again, if it's stacking paper that you're talking about, you'd be a fool to think that Viper only has one source of income.
Like any successful rapper, Viper's potential isn't limited by the rap game. He has of course got a lucrative side hustle as an entrepreneur. In fact, Viper is famously a business graduate from the University of Houston, a licensed real estate broker, and the founder of his very own realty company, Free Movers. Now, supposedly Free Movers is an innovative startup company, which essentially aims to combine the ideas of having a real estate broker and your moving company, so that when it comes to selling your house, you also get the moving services included within that package. Sounds kind of smart, right? Well, let's take a look at some of his reviews. The owner and an additional mover showed up to move me in a handmade trainer with no lights on the inside, holes in the flooring, and a door that didn't properly close, attached to a mid-sized pickup with only one headlight. Both movers had no shirts and smelled like alcohol. I contacted the owner and he says he doesn't have a broker license, nor does he have any proof of services rendered. According to our records, there are no records of the people that he is invoicing for ever living at this property. Do not use them. The company is a fraud company. However, don't let the blatant unprofessionalism, lack of an actual license, or what looks like out and out fraud stop you from investing because Viper is going places. In fact, he lists himself on Twitter, I shit you not, as the world's first trillionaire, pending once he IP POs on his free movers company. Quick word of advice, if your Twitter bio both says that you're going to be the world's first trillionaire, and also that you're a 9-5 blood member, I probably don't think you're gonna IPO anytime soon. But then again, we all know that prior to founding Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett was famously a member of the Rolling Twenties handicapped crimps. But anywho, lack of license, clients, or any discernible proof that he actually does run a legitimate company, that hasn't stopped Viper of making promises of multi-million dollar real estate deals to the young, impressionable women that have gotten in touch with him. Right, so this is where the story gets pretty much too ridiculous for life. Since Viper's prolific music catalogue has been discovered by the internet, several wannabe edgy vegan latte drinking shit rags like Vice and Noisy have attempted to interview him, of course ironically, through barely held straight faces. They all come off as a little bit of a laugh, half mocking Viper for his terrible music, but kind of half bigging him up for sticking it out for so long and putting out so much goddamn music. But it seems like very few of these journalists actually bothered looking into some of the deeper problems behind the scenes when it comes to Viper online. Well, a few years later, the Viper phenomenon spread beyond the fart sniffery at Vice to 4chan. I was also going to introduce 4chan with an insulting joke, but then I remembered I'm very scared of them. Anyway, the guys at 4chan decided to show Vice what real journalism is by getting in touch with Viper via text message because he regularly gives out his personal phone number online. I know this seems kind of unusual, but actually doxing your own mobile phone number and encouraging fans to get in touch with you has actually been a hip hop trope for many years, utilized by the likes of Mike Jones, Soldier Boy, and even Big Sean, who to this day is still waiting for a single person to actually try and call him. That's a direct connection. Y'all got my number. I was trying to say I changed all this stuff, man. Like, here's my number, man. Like, my real phone number. Well, 4chan had a field day with Viper pulling off several hilarious shenanigans. Firstly, someone recut some of Viper's green screen footage to show him rapping in front of somebody farting. At least that's what it looked like, but then again, it could be somebody at Vice putting together an article, I'm not sure. Bro, if you don't take that stupid farting video down, I'm gonna make a complaint to YouTube and they are gonna close their whole channel and I've done that before. E. So what time tomorrow can I expect to delete it? Suck my cock, Viper, you psycho C-word. You better do what I say, you retarded little bitch. When he pressured the uploader to take it down, Viper was offered a deal. I will take the video down if you send me a picture of you with a shoe on your head right now. But the trolling was about to go far beyond harmless shoe headery, and somebody on 4chan got in touch with Viper pretending to be an underage girl. Well, this shit went down with all of the precision of a 6'9 stage dive. Well, Viper was swiftly exposed for trying to chat up 15 year old girls on his Twitter. Yes, but I'm also 15. I know, but if it's just a number and I look in my 20s, you like nice lunches to end dinners and I bet you like movies to write because I do. But even more hilariously, when somebody from 4chan got in touch pretending to be a 17 year old girl. Dear Viper, I'm your biggest fan. I just wanted to thank for the inspiration you've given me. I've always wanted to see you live. If you ever do a live concert, I will flight it. XOXOXO, lots of hearts. Thanks, what grade you in? What town are you in? I am right now going into my last year of high school. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Right now you and listening to French Maid Servant, Maine, and it is fire. I am really enjoying it. I hope you know you have been such a big influence on my life. Are you a girl? And if so, can you please send me a pic? And then pretended to be that made up girl's father, Viper responded with the incredible quip 17 is legal, pops. Ugh. To be fair, I think Drake's probably sent a few of those out in his time as well. Anywho, this doesn't bode well for Viper's squeaky clean image. Combine these leaked texts with some frankly depressing footage of him getting a little bit too handsy with some of the women that he hired from Craigslist, it's not looking so good. Though to be fair, seeing such a gropey Viper isn't necessarily a surprise when you consider the fact that he does have an album that's titled, I don't need to ask, she's saying yes. This whole thing is frankly really sad, and to be honest, it looked for a while that Viper had spiraled into a hole of depression and sadness 
business that it looked like for a little while was going to end in suicide. Which brings us to one of the most exciting pieces of hip-hop lore in history, Thought. On March 27th, 2016, Viper announced that he was going on a spiritual, soul-searching journey. However, it quickly became clear that he wasn't talking about a yoga retreat or a spa day, but he was talking about Thought, aka the harness of death. Yes, Viper continued to come out with a bizarre series of tweets where he said that he was attempting to lose weight and his own life. And he would do this by essentially putting on two of the smallest sized body belts from TummyTuckBelts.com in an attempt, in his own words, to smush his stomach and internal organs to make small. It seemed like his intention was to wear this for 10 days, ultimately dying on day six, but he seemingly chickened out slash had better sense after day three when he had a car crash. However, three days later, he was back on the wagon, refusing to shower and wearing the harness once again. After a few weeks of unshowered, horny action, it became clear that Viper's internal organs were no match for the harness, and he began to label each attempt on his own life as a journey. By May, he's still going strong, proclaiming that the more he wears this, the more powerful he becomes and the more wealthy he becomes. And that's actually true, he's finally cracked the code of how Jay-Z really became a billionaire. But by June, things had really taken a turn for the worse. The harness tightened its grip on Viper's insides, making them smaller than he bargained for, and he ended up in the hospital with pneumonia. But within a month, he's back on his fifth harness, going strong. But by August, mentions of the Thod seemingly fade away and he's finally able to focus on music again. But that doesn't stop him from making intermittent attempts on the harness every now and then, with the latest coming as recent as December 2017. So that's the story of Viper. Even though his music is terrible, unlistenable, and frankly, he's a terrible human being. There is something to be admired by the sheer amount of output and the sheer amount of love that this guy has shown to the rap game, despite having absolutely no talent for it. And in honor of Viper's incredible finesse, recording 347 or so albums in an entire year, basically an album a day, I, your boy Traplor Ross, also decided to attempt to record an entire album in a day. But unfortunately, that became such an enormous ordeal that it needed its own video. So if you wanna go and check out me creating an entire classic rap album in a day, go and check out this link and take a look. Thanks for watching, big up Viper, big up your boy Traplor Ross, go check out the album in a day, and until next time, a peace out.